In this video, I'll be talking about unbalanced transportation problem. So here I have considered a mathematical formation of a transportation problem. And we know that this side AI is the uh, supply and BJs are the demand. In my previous video, we have already discussed about this mathematical formulation. And if we say that uh, we have certain supplies here, S1, S2, let us say up till SM. And on this side, we have the destination where the material is being sent. And this is the supply available at each resource. And this is the demand which we have considered here with the representation B1 up till Bn. So if we sum this total supply and the total demand, and if this supply summation of Ai and the total requirement, which is the demand at this these destination, if they are same, then we say that the problem is balanced. So we, we consider a problem to be balanced if the summation of AI is equal to summation of BJ, that is total supply is equal to total demand. But in case if this quantity is not equal, if the supply is not equal to the total demand, so this means there are two possibility, either supply is greater than demand, so this is the first possibility or the second possibility is supply is less than the demand. So we, so it is possible in the first case, so in case one, we add we add a dummy demand so we add a dummy demand so to make sure that because supply was greater than demand so we add a dummy demand and in case we have the case 2 so we add a dummy source so we add a dummy source and whatever is the deficient we'll put that in the column uh, either in the demand or source with the cost with cost involved as zero with cost involved as zero in both the cases okay so here also we the cost involved is as zero now let us take an example here now this is an example find the initial bfs to the transportation problem using northwest least cost method and vogel's approximation method in my earlier video we have already uh, taken up examples and we have uh, given enough uh, arguments for all these three methods how to find initial basic feasible solution so here is a problem and we can see very uh, clearly from here if I, if I sum this summation of ai what is the summation of ai so this summation of ai is not equal to summation of bj so there is a gap of 50 so this means that 50 would it is less than my supply and the demand is actually demand is greater than supply so when my demand is greater than supply so this means i need to add the deficient demand so in this case we can check by the summation the deficient is 50 so i'm adding a dummy i'm adding a dummy source which is let me to call this as s4 or maybe a dummy source with the cost involved here is zero if it was other way around if the demand is less than supply we would have added a column with the cost associated as zero and now we want to solve this uh, we want to find initial bfs with the usual uh, way we find now let's start because in the northwest we start from this particular cell so here i'm going to allocate a minimum of 150 once we allocate a minimum of 150 this means it is going to it's going to cut this particular column and this demand is completed instead of 200 what is left out here is 50 and then we'll move in the next cell once we move in the next cell we'll allocate a minimum of 40 and 50 so we'll allocate a 40 here that means here now this column is fully exhausted and we are left with here the quantity 10 and we'll move to the next column in the next column 10 and 180 so the a minimum of 10 is allocated so once we allocate 10 that means this is also completely gone and here i am left with in the destination d3 i am left here with 170 now we'll move down because we are doing northwest so in this particular column we'll have uh, in this particular cell we'll have 170 170 means that we have been not we are finished with the demand required for d3 destination and here we are left with the quantity 10 because this is already gone now in that 10 it is because it is the last column and last row so we'll move now here so a 10 will go here this means we'll be left with 160 here and then i'll move the next cell that is 110 so we'll we we'll allocate 110 here and so gradually we'll allocate 50 here 
Now you see this 50 multiplied by this 0. It's not going to make any difference in the, co in the objective function. So this is only helping us to find initial BFS. So we, and we have already done in my last video that whenever we have summation of AI equal to equal to summation of BJ, that is if it if if the transportation problem is balanced, then we can always find a feasible solution. Then we can always find we can always find feasible solution. In fact, basic feasible solution. So this is the reason why we always uh, ensure that the LPP is in the feasible solution. And in this case, if I want to find out what is the value for my Z, so for Z, what I just need to do is I just simply multiply cost with this associated uh, allocation with this associated cost. And then I take 10 into 22 plus 170 into 32 plus 10 into 41 and plus 110 into 32 and plus 50 into 0. So this total makes the quantity as 13650. So that's the total quantity of the Z of this particular question of unbalanced transportation problem. Now let's do this uh, same question with uh, the least cost method. So here my, uh, I want to find initial BFS of this unbalanced transportation problem using least cost method. So we say here I have already uh, added a dummy supply and what was the demand here? This demand was 150, 40. 180 and 170 and now because i'm applying least cost method so i want to find the least cost available in this particular uh, matrix or the transportation trouble uh, table here the least cost is zero and which is occurring at in the last row uh, for the dummy supply because zero is considered to be the least one and in this zero that means uh, we are going to have the uh, tie in the least cost so we can allocate either in the first case or in this case uh, and how much we want to allocate we try to send we, because we want to always minimize the number of iterations also so we try to send the maximum of xij in one go if i choose this first cell i'm going to send 50 if i choose this second cell i'm going to send 40 and 50 a minimum of 40 so either we choose this this or this so in these three cells we are going to send a, a allocation of 50 so let me to choose by random I am allocating this quantity 50. Once we allocate 50, this means this whole cost is gone. And here I am left with a quantity 100. Now let us again choose which is the least cost in the remaining one, which is 18. So if I allocate now in this 18, so this means 100 and 110, a minimum of 100 will go here. So that means once 100 is gone here, this the demand of the D1 is completely fulfilled. And I am here left with a quantity 10. Then the next least cost is 24 and in this 24 what would be the allocation 10 and 180 10 will come here this means now this 10 is also gone here and I'm left here with a quantity 170 then the next least cost is 25 so in that 25 which is this one S1 D2 cell so a 40 and 200 a 40 will come here once we allocate this 40 here, this means this cell is also gone. The remaining were already gone. So these were already gone. So this 40 is finished and we are left with this quantity as 160. Now in these four cells, the least is 28. So we first allocate in 28. So a 160 and 170. 160 will be minimum. Once we allocate here 160, this means this is gone and here I'm left with a quantity 10 and also this cell is exhausted. So now we are left with S2D3 and S2D4. So in this case, I'm going to fill up this 10. The remaining 10 will be gone, 170. So we'll put 170 also and that makes a total of 180. So once the problem is balanced, so we can do that. And to make it bal unbalanced problem a balanced one, we, add, we have added a dummy supply. And now if, if I want to calculate what is the value for Z, so again multiply the corresponding XIJ and the CIJ and sum these quantity. In this case, the total sum comes out to be 14,810. And we see here the Northwest has given the uh, Z value as 13,650 and this gives 14,810. So it's not always right to say that the least cost uh, method gives a better solution than northwest okay there is no as such as a result but yes there are probability because we are uh, we want to minimize the cost and here in this uh, 
particular uh, question we are trying to uh, always allocate as per the minimum cost now in the third case we want to solve this problem and want to find initial bfs using vogel's approximation method so for this we calculate the penalties on both side and then we want to find out which is the largest penalty and then in the largest penalty we want to choose the least cost cell so the penalties is the uh, difference between the least and the next least cost so in the first row the least cost is 20 and the next least cost is 25 so the penalty is 5 and in the similar process procedure we calculate the penalties corresponding to each row and corresponding to each column so that's 25 24 and in the last the least is 0 and the next least is 31 so the penalty is 31 so from here we can easily see the highest penalty is corresponding this 31 and in the 31 what is the least cost cell that is 0 so here i am going to first allocate which is minimum of my supply and demand that is 50 once this 50 is allocated this means this whole uh, row is exhausted and here we are left with this quantity as 120 so and then we find the penalties again so this row penalty is completely gone because this row uh, is exhausted uh, or whatever be the supply here 50 we have already sent the supply so we again calculate the penalties and we have not changed anything in the first three rows so the penalties remain same here the penalty may get changed in the first column least is 18 and the next least is 20 so the penalty is 2 and similarly the penalties corresponding to other columns are this now the highest penalty is 6 and in that the least cost is 18 so first we are going to allocate here which is 110 once we allocate 110 that means this is again gone and here we are left with this quantity as 40 so once we are left this quantity as 40 we are again going to recalculate the penalties so in third case the penalty here is 5 and in this case second row least is 28 and the next least is 32 so the penalty is 4 and these two are already exhausted in the first row the highest penalty is 12 and then we got 3 4 and 10 and once we now compare the penalties among rows and column it is clear that 12 is the highest penalty and in that 12 the least cost is 20 so here i'm going to allocate and which is a minimum of this 40 now this 40 will go here and uh, the, uh, from this 200 what is the remaining remaining is 160 so this 40 was not earlier gone now it is gone now we recalculate the penalty and here in the first row the minimum is 25 and the next minimum is 28 so the difference is 3 and the next difference is 4 these are gone this is also exhausted we have to cut this column also please make sure that you keep on cutting these columns also and then in the next row the highest penalty here is 3 25 and 28 this is 4 and in this case it is 10 31 and 41 the difference so the highest penalty is now 10 and in that least cost is 31 so i'm going to allocate now this 120 this was not allocated now i'm going to allocate this 120 and 160 so we allocate this 120 and 160 and what is the remaining remaining now here is 40 so now in that uh, s1 d2 s1 d3 and these four cells i'm again going to calculate the penalties so let me to exhaust these rows so now this 120 is gone and also we exhaust this so in this case first case the penalty is 3 here the penalty is 4 uh, here the penalty is 3 and here the penalty is uh, 28 and 32 the penalty is 4 so now either you choose uh, so there is a tie in this uh, case either we choose this 4 or we choose this 4 so this is a tie so this is a tie so we may choose anything if we choose this 4 the least cost is 28 uh, and if we choose this 4 the least is 28 so we can allocate in any of the cases suppose we first allocate here so i'm going to allocate this quantity of 40 here this means the remaining quantity here is left out to be 140 and then we are going to allocate uh, we again uh, recalculate the so this is exhausted and we simply allocate because now it's the last column so this 40 so this 40 will now go here and the remaining 140 will come here 
so now and we we can always cross check by summing the rows and the columns allocation so for example if i sum the first column allocation 40 plus 110 that makes 150 in the next column it is 40 so this is 40 third column will have allocation as 140 plus 140 so the initial is 180 and then the last column has 120 and 50 so it is 170 and similarly we can always uh, sum the allocation row wise to make sure that whether we have supplied all available material or not and then we want to calculate the z so for z again we simply multiply the allocation with the cost so 40 into 20 then plus 40 into 28 plus 120 into 31 plus 40 into 28 plus 140 into 32 plus 110 into 18 and then we have again 50 into 0 so this 50 is not going to make a contribution in the objective function line so this dummy columns dummy row only help us to solve the uh, to find initial BFS of this transportation problem and this quantity comes out to be 13220 so that's the initial BFS so z at initial BFS so this is z at initial BFS so this is how we can solve the unbalanced transportation problem by adding a dummy row or a dummy column